Hello, my name is Daniel Gopar, and this is going to be a tutorial, a series of tutorials on Emacs Lisp, or as it's also known as eLisp. So the main goal of these videos is to help you give you know enough foundation in eLisp that you're going to be able to create your own snippets of code to customize Emacs. And hopefully with that as well, you're going to be able to contribute to other packages that you use. For example, you find a bug, you can read the code, and you can submit a PR. Or maybe you can create your own minor mode or package or whatever you want, man. So yeah, so let's get started. So first off, we're going to press meta X, and then we're going to type in I-E-L-M, and then press enter. So what this is doing, it's going to bring us up to the ELIS REPL. So Emacs has a built-in REPL, and we're going to use that for this video. So in most languages, like Python, Java, all, all those languages, you usually do, um, you have things like numbers, and ELISP has that too. So we just press enter, and of course we get 345 back, just as we expected. So ignore this part, this is just um, uh, some other stuff that evaluates to 345. So for example, this is, I think in octo, or, or base 8, and this is uh, hexadecimal and this is just the character code representing that value but yeah whatever so so it has numbers it has floating points as well Ta-da! and of course it has strings hello YouTube I can't even spell YouTube so there you go you have strings so you're saying okay cool that seems familiar what if you what if I want to add well that's easy you just, uh, like in all other languages you mostly do this 5 plus 5 right alright let's try it Bam, look at that error. It just screams at you. Boom. More than one S expression in input. You're saying, okay, I have no idea what that means. Relax. Basically, um, Elis is trying to parse this, but it can't because it doesn't know how to read that. The way Emacs Lisp or Elis read stuff is, well, the way you're going to do most and mostly anything useful is through the use of parens, man. So parentheses, that's basically all you're going to be using all day long. So the traditional way of doing things in normal languages, I guess, uh, quote unquote, normal languages is doing this. But in Elisp, you have to put things in parentheses. So, OK, you're saying, all right, so it's in parentheses now. So now it should work, right? Well, let's try it. Bam, invalid function. And saying that 5 is not an invalid function. And the reason for that is because the first thing inside of the parentheses, Elisp thinks that's a function that it can call. So it's trying to find a function called 5, and it's trying to pass in these as arguments. And of course, 5 is a number, so it's not a function. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to switch these guys over. We're going to say plus, that's a function, and we're going to pass these things over, and it should work. So let's try it. Bam, 10. And of course, we can pass in more things, more numbers, and ta-da, we get those. So yeah, so the same thing applies for uh, uh, multiplication and division, and of course, subtraction. So yeah, ta-da, all that good stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So you're saying, all right, so now I know how to do that. So you might be saying can I have them inside of another yes you can so for example you can do plus four plus and then you can have another one that says um, minus uh, ten and uh, four so this should be ten right but um you can do that as well and it, and it all works because Elis evaluates this one first and then it does the outer one so yeah pretty much simple so next thing I want to go over is functions. How do you define functions? Because uh, if you want to do anything useful, again, you're going to use functions. So simple, use parentheses, because we're going to use parentheses for everything. And then we're going to do defun. So define function. And next is going to, we're going to give the name of the uh, function. So we're going to do add nums. So it's going to add numbers, this function. And next, we're going to have another set of parentheses right here. And we're just going to do um, the, the arguments, so A and B, so right there. Notice there's no comma or anything separating them, it's just A and B, just like that. All right, cool. Next, what we're going to do is, is the, op the adding operation. So like I said, we're going to do a plus, then A and B. So you're saying, and so, and that's it. 
we just press enter and it's evaluated. Notice how we don't put anything called return or anything like that to let uh, Elisp know that that's the value we're returning. Elisp or list just returns the last thing that it evaluated within the function block. So since the plus operation was the last thing it evaluated, or in this case it's the only thing that it evaluated, it just returned that and pretty much that's it. You don't believe me? Well, let's call it. Add nums and 10, 10. That should be 20, right? Bam, 20. All right, cool. So next thing we would obviously do is, um, you know, create a function for each multiplication, division, and all that. Get a little, um, get a little work done, little practice. But another thing that I want to stress is testing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna require a library. We're going to import a library, and this is how we import stuff, by doing require. And then we're just going to, oh, I just noticed that this is not correctly placed. There we go. So in case you couldn't see the typing, sorry about that, I didn't realize it. So we're going to require, then ERT. That's the library. That's the Emacs testing library. So we're going to press enter. Bam. There we go. All right, so now it's loaded. So how do we write a test? Well, that's easy. Again, we're going to use the parentheses because we can't do nothing without parentheses. And we're going to do uh, ERT, oops, def test, ERT def test. So we're going to define a test. And we're going to do this add nums positive. So we're going to pass in positive numbers. And this is the argument, but of course, we're not going to pass anything in. So the only thing we're going to do is we're going to use this little um, uh, keyword should which um, so you have three kinds right here should this should be uh, non nil so either true or false I mean some value that's not uh, that is not false uh, should error so this is so this when you use this the output should produce an error and that way it can verify that it did and this should be false and I should go over over truth and false and what that means in Lisp so should so that's a function and we got to do the other thing so we're going to do should equal um, add what was it nums 10 10 and 20 so right here I'm going to split this up so I think if you press enter if you try to separate it into multiple lines it's going to evaluate it so one way you can get around that is by doing meta x new line type that in and there you go like that and use that for when creating a new line because if you try press enter again right here it will try to evaluate it and that's a no-no so yeah so try to make it more reader readable there we go so new line right there yeah so we're saying okay when I do when I call this function add nums with the numbers 10 10 it it's gonna equal 20 and that should be true so that's pretty much what's happening, what I'm writing in this test. So I'm going to press enter. And now the add nums pause right here is evaluated. So if we try to call it add nums pause, oh, look at that. The, uh, it's not valid. Now, the reason for why it's not valid is because art, um, ERT, or ERT, or however it's pronounced, um, hides it from, the, from you. That way, you don't accidentally mix it up with other functions or whatever. So one way we can call the test is by doing meta x ERT and then just press enter. And by default, it's going to have a little uh, T right next to it, which is going to be the default value, which we don't want for this example. I mean, you can press enter and it'll run the test, but we're going to be specific. So press tab and it's already going to populate with the test that we created. Now, if you have two or more tests, it's going to prompt you for which one you want, and it's going to show you a list that you can pick. But for now, since we only have one, it automatically populates it for you. So we press uh, tab, we have it, and then we just press enter. Bam, look at that. So look at that. It passed. A little green light. That's awesome. So you're saying, all right, so what happens if it fails? How does it look like? Well, that's easy. We'll just add zero right there, and we evaluate the test again. And we do, oops, oops, what I do, what I do, and we do meta x ERT, and then again we call the function that we want to test, and bam, look at that. Oops. So if we scroll down, you're gonna see 
that this is what it was trying to evaluate, the whole should function right here. But what it got back was comparing equal 20 to 0, which is of, call, of course false. So it raises the error. So yeah, I mean, tests aren't that hard to do or read. It just takes a matter of practice. So if we do this, it should work again. And we do ERT, run test, and look at that, it's passing. How awesome is that? And I think that's enough. Yeah, that's around 11 minutes, that's fine. So yeah, I'm gonna continue in the next uh, video. All right, sweet, thanks.